The Tidewater subdivision was built by the Canadian National Railway in 1925 to shorten the distance from Lake Couch and Sawmills to the Tidewater shipping port at Couch and Bay to facilitate their lumber exports. Prior to 1925, Couch and Valley Lumber had to be shipped all the way to Victoria, B.C., then out the Sandwich Peninsula to Patricia Bay, where it was loaded onto ships from the 600-meter-long pier built out into the bay for this purpose. The Tidewater Pier, Couch and Bay, exists to this day as the West Can Terminals Limited, but its glory days have long since ceased. The CNR right-of-way, which covered the 7-kilometer distance westward from Cowichan Bay to the CNR Cowichan subdivision at Deerholm, likewise exists to this day. It's only the right-of-way. All the track and the ties have been removed. But the Tidewater subdivision rail trail is frequented by local residents to the extent the trail is kept open year-round. The local residents use it as a convenient shortcut between the Clonora region and Duncan, B.C. via Coke Siler Road. Coke Siler Road is where we'll begin our 17-kilometer cycling journey to the Kinsole Trestle on the Tidewater Subdivision Rail Trail. The Kinsole Trestle is located at mile 51.1 on the CNR main line of the Cowichan subdivision. Today these elements form the Vancouver Island section of the Trans-Canada Trail. The CNR Tidewater subdivision rail trail intersects the CNR Cowichan subdivision at Deerholm. Originally there were two Ys joining the two subdivisions, but today the locals have only kept the southern Y open for trail users. The purpose of the two Ys was so trains could take the Tidewater subdivision, whether southbound or northbound, from the Cowichan subdivision main line. Those of us using the Tidewater subdivision rail trail today can appreciate what a marvelous resource this is to the Cowichan Valley residents, particularly those living in the Duncan Glenora region. But think of its potential as an access point to the Kinsole Trestle. People will be coming from the world over to view the Kinsole once it's completed in 2011. The restoration fund has reached 80% of its projected goal of $5 million already. How will all these hikers and cyclists get to the Kinsole from Duncan, British Columbia? The Tidewater Subdivision Rail Trail. Once the Tidewater Subdivision Rail Trail becomes the official access point to the Kinsole Trestle from the Duncan area, negotiations can begin with First Nations regarding these sections of the Tidewater Subdivision Rail Trail passing through their lands. There will be real economic benefit for the First Nation entrepreneurs and artists to service this high-volume, target-marketed visitors to the Tidewater Trailhead. This will presumably be located between Highway 1 at Miller Road and Trestle Road on First Nations land. At the start of this video, a photo of the Tidewater Subdivision train bridge over Highway 1 was shown, along with the accompanying vehicle bridge. Both these are now gone, but here again, the Tidewater Subdivision right-of-way remains. The last vestige of the line is visible at Trestle Road, in the form of the high fill, where Trestle Road meets Miller Road. This is where the western end of the CNR Tidewater Subdivision Trestle over Highway 1 was connected. One can follow this right-of-way west on First Nations land to Coke Siler Road. Likewise, where the trestle connected to the eastern side of Highway 1, the rip-rap berm is still there. One can follow this eastern section of the Tidewater Subdivision to Sahalem Road and on to the West Can Terminal Pier. Therefore, I submit that if the Cowichan Valley Regional District does not act regarding this matter by procuring legal access rights to this invaluable resource, the Tidewater Subdivision Rail Trail, the opportunity to develop this world-class access to their world-class Kinsole Trestle, will be lost forever.